afternoon. Good evening. All right. Man, hey. things going along there, and I listened to James. He got me off key there. <laughs> no, I'm just making fun. But it's good to be here this afternoon. Good to see you in the Lord's house. Church, you had a good afternoon. Remember these on a prayer list, those on sick folks. Do remember the Meadows family, Miss Shelley. She had the appendix taken out this morning. She'd have a speedy recovery there. Any other announcements? We'll go farther. Seniors were meeting Saturday, leaving at noon, going to Catfish Cabin. Noon. <laughs> there is a, a qualification. We'll, we'll get you a checkoff sheet. <laughs> uh, but it's good to be here. Good to see you this afternoon. Do remember that. Any other announcements before we go farther? Uh, nothing else. We'll ask that.
face as he is. He takes me by the hand and leads me through that promised land. We'll get to see Moses and Noah and all those folks in the Old Testament and they can tell us about their faith and the one that saved them by his blood. Everybody that would stand in this fellowship just a moment. Good evening. Good evening. Well, I say it's good to be here. Good to see everybody's coming to be in an afternoon service. I trust that you've had a good week this week. We have and I hope that you have. We sort of loafed last week and had to go back to work this week, and so <laughs> we about wowed out of our house. And uh, I've been working, been speaking, been preaching, and been trying to sing. Amen. Amen. And so <laughs> I'm wowed out. Amen. I've got <laughs> somehow or another, my, my, I just don't have much winds all to have. And my voice about gone, but I'll tell you, it's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. I hope you had a good service this morning. We did. I had the privilege to fill in for somebody and speak this morning over at Pleasant Valley, Pleasant Valley Number 1. And we'd been there a good while back before filling in. We enjoyed being with them. Rode over to Rome and visited a good friend of ours in the hospital, uh, Florida County. And so went over and stayed a while with, with him, doll and hugging. I asked you to pray for him. Uh, he'd had some real serious surgery a couple weeks ago. And he's over there for better care and rehab. So I did not know they had like a hospital inside the hospital at Florida County. You've got to go into the hospital to get there. And what's the name of that? Hendrick, I believe is the name of the hospital. That's what they call it is for rehab for people that have like him. He had colon uh, cancer and plus his appendix had rotted and all that mass and all of that and had to take out part of his colon. And so he's over there for a little better care and and for rehab, rehab mostly, and he's doing great. And so I asked you to remember and pray for him and his family. His wife is a cancer survivor, and so I asked you to remember them. But he is doing a lot better, looks better, and so I don't know how long he'll have to be there. But he's been a good friend of mine now for, I guess, probably after my wife had died, we had visited Lee's Chapel. I said, no need driving all the way somewhere else, and we've got a good church right here in the community. And uh, so we just went over there. And, uh, and that's how I met him, and we just become the best of friends, and so I asked you to pray for him and his family. I know we have a number of people that are sick, and so just ask you to remember all of them and the families that's lost loved ones. Let's remember them tonight and pray for them. Uh, I wonder if anybody else has a word or anything you'd love to have. Yes, amen. I do. I'd like to praise the Lord. Tonight. Yes. Amen. And and, um, and that's something that I'm always going to have to live with. But praise God tonight for the answer, for the answer to prayer. He's made it so that at least for now I don't have to have a surgery that was going to hold Amen. me for a year and a half. And praise the Lord. Take that time, and I want to thank Him for that. Amen. Praise Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. 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 I don't know about her, but I'm looking forward to the golden years. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's when you get old enough, you can't feel nothing. <laughs> Brother Jack, maybe we'll get there. Amen. But I appreciate God's good to us, isn't he? Amen. I'm telling you, we may not get rid of our illness. I've got something I have to live with the rest of my life, too. But I'm glad he's able to take care of some of the results from it. Amen. And so it's just praise the Lord. Amen. And it's good to be here. And uh, somebody asked me how I'm doing. I said, well, I get up every day on my own and do what I want to do. You can't ask for more than that. And, uh, you know, and I'm not near as old as some people that's so walking around. And so we we'll just praise the Lord, Brother Fred. Amen. <laughs> anything else in the way of a testimony? Anything? I yes. Up.
No, no, no. It's a funny thing that the sermon that he preached this morning was pretty much what I was going to stand up. Praise God. <clears throat> Amen. I mean, he's, he's, he's been real good to me. Linda had that procedure last week. And, you know, you, you pray and you ask God to, you know, to take care of things. And, uh, you feel like you can take care of a lot of things yourself, just like the preacher said, without the Lord's help. Uh-huh. And sometimes you're not as specific That's right. in your prayers as what you should be. Right. And Linda's got the real little veins. Bless her, Lord. It's hard to get blood from her veins sometimes. Uh huh. For whatever reason, that slipped my mind the first day we was down there, I guess, to ask the Lord to specifically, you know, make it as easy on her and the nurses as possible. And I got started praying on that request. Bless her, Lord. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, the nurses, they, they're supposed to be constant. Sometimes they're a little overconfident on you know, mm-hmm. what they do and they do. And uh, they just they just not real used to seeing things like my wife's got. And when they <laughs> get poking around for a little while, they admit it. And they ask the Lord to help them. Amen. Thank goodness he does. But I promise you they had to do the same thing the second day, second part of that procedure for the second day, and I didn't forget it then. The nurses didn't forget it either. Amen. 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 And, you know, they were successful. I mean, just the first little stick that they had to go to. And, and God's good. I mean, he's right. good Amen. in everything. And Amen. like I say, <clears throat> we're too uh, full of ourselves to sometimes to ask him to help us. And right. So I just thank God for everything he's done for me. And I'm, I'm ashamed of myself for not asking him. Bless him, Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Bless you, Brother Don. Amen. 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 We take too much for granted, don't we? Amen. Amen. Bless y'all, brother. Bless him, more. Amen. 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 Bless him, Lord. Amen. Bless your heart. Amen. Amen. I love them people from Mississippi, don't y'all? Amen. Amen. Appreciate you, brother. Amen. 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 Anything else? Now, you mind the Lord tonight. Amen. <clears throat> this is the only thing I've got planned tonight right here. Amen. Amen. Anything. I want you to feel free in the service. Feel like having part of it. You do that. Amen. Yeah, Bless him, Lord. Yeah. Watching men testify. Yeah. Bless him, Lord. I'd always say, if I had to tell you something to say, I'd get up and say, if I had a testimony like that, it's God bless you. You know what I mean? That is, God saved an old sinner like me. Bless him, Lord. That's worth telling somebody. Amen. 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 We're just who we are by the grace of God, aren't we? Amen. <laughs> and the Lord loves us, so let's don't be ashamed of it. Amen? Amen. Anything else? Anything? That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. I tell you, God's been good to us, hasn't he? Amen. Last 50 years, we've seen a lot of things. Man, another 50 years, we're going to enjoy some things. Amen. <laughs> Amen. What a day that'll be. Amen. Amen. I did a funeral home the other morning, and uh, one of the directors asked me, he's going to ask you something. I said, well, I might not have an answer for it, but you can ask me the question. He said, what's the difference between being in rest and being with the Lord? <clears throat> he said, I said, well, I don't know what you're saying. He said, well, the preacher said he's either at rest or he's with the Lord. I tell you, I'm going to be at rest in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I probably understood what he meant, but anyhow, it didn't come out. You know, us preachers sometimes, things go through our minds are quick. You can't separate them. And uh, <laughs> they don't come out right. When you try to say two hours and 30 minutes, that's a pretty good job. Amen? All right. Anything else? 
I'll try to say 20 and 10 tonight, Kenny. How's that? Amen. <laughs> All right, turn to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation 3. Yeah, serious, it is a long message, but you know, you can't teach everything that's here in one setting. That's the reason I love to teach a verse, few verses at a time, but uh, anyhow, I went to Brotherhood meeting Thursday night and preached and I uh, tried to be as brief as I can. I said, I don't have any short sermons, but I'll, sh I'll just make it as quick as I can, amen? And so we had a good, I hope y'all had a good Brotherhood. We did, amen? And I really enjoyed it. And so you pray, you just pray for it. Our Revelation chapter 3, I wasn't for sure where we're at. I don't know if I skipped one, but anyhow, this is where we're at. I'm going to say where well, I studied a little bit, okay, amen? I don't really mess up. But look at what it says. Now, I want to just share some things real briefly. Uh, it says, let's read the verses and then we'll look at some things. It says, unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and are dead. Isn't that sad? I right, notice verse number two. Two things. Notice what it says. Be watchful and strengthen the few things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Verse three. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have, have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white lament, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, if we come before you tonight, we need your help, God, to open up your word to us, that, Lord, we might have a better understanding, that we may be able, Lord, to see the things that you have for us, we pray tonight, God, as you know our heart, you speak to each of us, draw us close to you, challenge us. And Lord, us who are saved, may we leave here with a greater desire to be faithful. And Lord, for those that are here tonight, Lord, are not where they ought to be, I pray this will be a time of recommitment, a time of coming of rededication, and renewal, and pick up the cross and follow you. And if there should be somebody here tonight, Lord, that realizes that they're not saved, God, may they realize, Lord, that you're coming in judgment soon. And Lord, they need to be ready. They need to be watching. And so I pray for them. This would be a very special time for them. They'd be able to come and be saved tonight before it's too late. Father, continue to forgive us of our sins and may everything that we do bring honor and glory to your name. For we ask in Christ's name, amen. amen. Now you remember there are, <clears throat> there are seven letters John has written. He's on the Isle of Patmos. He has been exiled to the Isle of Patmos for the testimony and the witness of the Lord. That's why God's got him there. They couldn't kill him. God kept him alive. God had put him on the island for a purpose. And so he was there till he died, <clears throat> as far as we know. Some think he may have come back for a little while, but I don't know if we could prove that. But anyhow, he was there, the Bible said, for the testimony of the Lord. And so we have seen him uh, in the throne room in chapter 1 and then in verses two, or chapter 2 and verse 3. We have the record of the seven letters uh, that God had written to the seven churches, physical, actual churches, there in that day. And so we've been looking at those. And so we look at Sardis tonight. <clears throat> there, this is the only church, uh, most scholars say, or Bible teachers say, there is uh, no commendation. There is nothing said good about them. But, I, but I'm going to disagree just a little bit tonight, and I'll tell you why in a minute. I, I believe there's a little bit of something that we can say uh, that's good about this church. But I want you to think about the church at Sardis. Uh, it was the dead church. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? And I'm going to tell you why it's even sadder. Uh, you know, I believe there's all across our land, in our world, there are churches that are spiritually dead. Amen? And I'll tell you why that is in a few minutes. But I want you to think about as you look at these churches. Uh, five out of the seven, this is the fifth out of, out of the seven churches, I believe. Uh, as you look at these churches, we look at, we look at, we look at history, and there was a church at Sardis. Uh, they are symbolic of different types of churches. 
There are types of uh, individual Christians or church members. And so when you look at these churches, you can either, you can find your church in one of these letters or maybe more than one. As you look at your life, you can look at these seven letters and you can find your individual Christian life in one or more of these letters that God has written to the churches. And brothers, you read these, it really speaks to us, doesn't it? Or it should, amen? And so if we look at the church at Sardis, uh, and as you look at the seven churches I had remembered, before it helps me, may not you, but it helps me when I think about uh, there are seven parts to every letter with the exception of one. And so when you look at the seven churches and you look at the seven part outline, first of all, you have the correspondence. That is, always in the first verse, or the first two verses, you always have who's doing the writing. It always goes back to God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in chapter 1. That's who wrote or had John to write the letters to the churches at Asia. This is, is the Word of God. And so you have the correspondent, you have the church, you have the city, you have the commendation, if there is any, and then you have the condemnation, what's wrong with them. You have the command, how to fix it, and the counsel. Now let's look at, just for a minute, as we think about the, cross, the correspondent uh, here. Who is doing the writing? Who's, who, who's doing in the title? Who's doing the speaking? And notice what it says back in verse 1 in chapter 3. It says, And to the angel of the church at Sardis write, These things hath he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Now, who is that? Well, if you look back in chapter 1, uh, you can find that's recorded over there, and you can find out exactly uh, who that is when you look back in chapter 1. And I should have just put my finger on it and marked what was that. I'd have to look at uh, the whole chapter, but uh, you can look back in chapter 1 and you can find that. And if you see it there, we'll just holler it out to me, chapter 1. What verse? 11. I thought, okay, thank you. Notice in verse number 11, and it says this, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, what thou seest write in the book, and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, and it names the churches. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, or lampstands, and in the midst of seven lamp lampstands, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, girt about with pouts with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes was a flame of fire, and his feet like the fine brass, as, it, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And now listen now, and he had in his right hand the seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun that shineth and its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and his right hand, and he lay his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am, the, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Write these things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, talking about church age, and the things which shall be hereafter, the tribulation period. Now notice verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. And so you see there you have an explanation of the vision that he saw. You remember I told you before as we look at the lamp stands and you see one moving about them. The Lord is moving about his church and keeping the lamp stands lit uh, and these kind of things. Amen. And then I want you to notice what it talks about here when we're looking at it. At Sardis, it talks about uh, the, the seven spirits. That is the totality or the completion that is simply the Spirit of God. That is the Holy Spirit of God. Now, I, I, I took time, and it was for my benefit more than it was for you, but I want to refresh this in my, in my memory, and I, I want to just share a little bit about this when we, when we think about this. Uh, when, when we think about it, uh, if I can find, and I wrote some things down I wanted to share with you. When you think about the speaker, which is the Lord Jesus, Jesus has the seven 
spirits of God or the Holy Spirit of God. Seven is completion, fullness, perfection. It is a sevenfold ministry of the Spirit of God. Let me just give that to you for a minute. Now let me, let me say this before I get it. Any church without the Holy Spirit is a dead church. Any, any organization with the, without the Spirit of God is not the church. Amen? For to be a part of the body of Christ, you must be born again of the Spirit of God. You must have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And we see that's one of the things wrong with this church. There are a lot of things that are going on today. And I said something the other day. In fact, I said God gets a lot of credit and blame for a lot of things He's not part of. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is not involved in. You can't be a saved, you can't be saved apart from the Holy Spirit. Amen. As many as are led of the Spirit of God are the what? Sons of God. Amen. You've got to be spiritually born. And see, the world can't understand the Word of God because it is spiritually discerned. Amen. Now, they may from intellect figure out some things, but they can't understand the Word of God. That's the reason we're in the mess we're in. Amen. Because we're trying to understand it up here and it's got to come through the heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now let me just mention the sevenfold ministry of the Holy Spirit and tell you where they're at. Right, notice what it says. I'll give you the verse. We're in John chapter 14 verse 16. It is our comforter and our helper. Listen, you and I can't do anything apart from the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. It takes that. You may start out, but you won't last because it takes the power. You remember what Jesus said? He said on the cross, it's finished. He bowed, he pillowed his head, he gave up the ghost, he died. He said it's finished. What was finished? Salvation. Brother, he died for our sin. He shed his blood that would cover our sin. But to work, didn't stop there. You remember in Acts chapter 1? You are a continuation of the work. Amen. I'm going to leave, but you're going to carry the work on. How are we going to do it? We've got to have some power. Jesus said, you just stay right here in Jerusalem. Don't go anywhere. You stay right here till you be what? Endured from on high with the Holy Spirit that's going to empower you. I'm going to equip you. You're going to be able to do the job. I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. You cannot withstand against evil without the indwelling of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's the reason we got churches got a thousand on membership and 300 involved in church. For that, they start out in the flesh and it fizzles out. Amen. The folks who are really saved and been born of the Spirit, indwelt with the Spirit, empowered by the Spirit, living by the Spirit of God, they're active. Amen. I enjoyed preaching this morning. Didn't have enough time, but. I enjoyed preaching, amen. <laughs> Ain't nothing like preaching, amen. <laughs> I love preaching better than singing. No, I don't mean that personally, right? amen. I love singing, man. Why are we talking about going to the Smokers? Inspirational Park, Bryson City, North Carolina. Going to the singing. But there ain't nothing like preaching. Amen. Nothing like preaching. Amen. You know why? It's like Moses when he's eating the bread from heaven. That's what the Word of God is, amen. What did Peter say? You babies need to get up to the table and start eating, Amen. That's reading the devil whooping folks everywhere that are saved. They ain't up to the table eating some real meat. All they want is that, and I won't use the word some preachers use, they want that sugar, amen. Now, I sort of try to separate my thoughts, amen. But listen to what I'm saying. Listen, the work of the sevenfold minister of the Holy Spirit is, he is our comforter. <coughs> I tell you, if all I had was a comfort from the world, I'd be ready to move out of here in a hurry, amen. But aren't you glad you got the Holy Spirit? Amen. Comfort you. It's sort of like when my mother, when I was little, my dad, he'd talk rough to me sometimes. He really talked to my sister sometimes, amen. And uh, sometimes he'd talk rough to us, wasn't he, man? <laughs> but I'm glad mom would always pet you, you know. And if you got a skit place, you didn't want Papa working on it. Tell you a true story. I don't marry Papa, don't remember it. She's older than me, you know. And she was gone before I got too old. But, and one time I had a little place where my finger wouldn't heal up. We didn't go to the doctor because we had no money. You've got to be dying before you go to the doctor. And I had a place that just kept on and wouldn't heal up. 
Dad and Papa had no money, so went over to Steele in, in Missouri and had no army doctor, retired army doctor. Man, I didn't like him. We went over there. You'd be sick when you go to him. He went over and looked at that. Peter went, man, he just tore it off. I won't tell you what I just thought, but hey, you can read my mind if you want to right there. And I uh, about had to get out of the floor. And uh, boy, I'm telling you what, that hurt. You want to go to him? You want to go to somebody that'll love you, pet you? Pop said, I ain't got but two or three dollars. And what it was, he said, that's okay. You just keep it. There'll be somebody in here coming here and got some money, and I'll get yours with theirs. Amen? <laughs> that's the way it operated. Amen? But you know, the, Holy, the, world, the world hates us. You know, if you really represent God and serve Christ, the world's going this way, and we're going this way. <coughs> Amen? I preached on personal righteousness this morning, one of the calls of God. You know, we're going up, the world's going down, we're hitting them head on. They don't like us. You know why? Because the only way they get to Jesus is through us. See, the Lord's not here. They can't get to Him, but if you represent God, they can get to you. And see, that sort of gives them a real relief when they can persecute you and not persecute, you know, when they can't persecute them, they persecute you. Oh, He's our comforter. Let's get back right quick. Tracy, too many right. Let's get back. It says he is our comforter and our helper. 17th verse of 14 says the spirit of truth. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've said, you know, I, I can't help it. I'm sorry. I, I just can't agree with you. I just know what scripture says. And for me, that's the truth. Amen. And where the Holy Spirit leads me, I've got to do that. Amen. I'm just peculiar in some areas and about things. And I'm telling you, he is the spirit of truth. I don't study false doctrine. I don't care what you join up with. If it don't match that, I can recognize it. Amen? If you don't think Jesus is the only way, you're way out in left field by yourself already. Going to hell. Amen? Because there ain't but one way. Amen? If you think there's a bunch of churches and a bunch of ways to go, there ain't but one church. He built that on the rock. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He, the cornerstone had been rejected. He become the head of the corner. Amen? Brother, God put him there. He established that. You don't have to study false doctrine. Just read the truth. He is the spirit of truth. Somebody said, well, I just go by my heart. You better be careful. Better be careful. You better make sure the Holy Spirit's leading you and it lines up with the Word of God. That's good preaching. Amen? Amen? But listen, he not only is our, he is our comforter, uh, he, he, is our, he is our helper, he comes alongside of us. Not only that, he is, he is the spirit of truth. Verse 18 says through 20, he is our personal presence of Christ living in us. You know, I've often wondered, you know, and I went to the land of Israel back in the mid-70s, and I often wondered, well, I must have been here when Jesus was here. He is here. Amen. Amen. He is here. He's living right here in my heart, in the person of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm going away, but hey, boys, don't worry about it. I'm going to send you another comforter. He's the third in the Godhead. He's the same as God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit's one. Amen. Amen. I'm going to send you another just like me. He's going to come right alongside you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. Amen. Not only that, he's not on our personal presence of Christ, our very special manifestation of Christ within the believer. And not only that, in, in verses 23, 24, abiding presence of the Trinity, verses 25, 26, he is the teacher. Verses 27 is, he is the peace of God. We have the peace that passeth all understanding. Somebody made the statement the other day, preacher, you so, you so easy going, see, Mike, you don't worry about anything. Hey, I've got the man with me that worries about things. He don't worry, he done took care of it, amen. He's got every day laid, laid out for me. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? All I got to do is get up in the morning and say, Lord, I love you. I'm going to start this day with you. You've got it laid out. You just take care of it and I'll just follow you. Amen. 
If I go to town running to somebody, we'll talk about the Lord, visit a while, whatever, have opportunity to share the Lord. We'll do whatever we've got to do, you know. He's taking care of it. Isn't that wonderful? That's the sevenfold ministry of the Holy Spirit. Amen? There it is in Sardis. What happened to that church? They operate without it. Operate without it. Trying to. Can't do it. All right, quick. I want to think about something else. Not only that, but think about this. Uh, and John and, and Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 talking about seven is the word completion there are seven things mentioned in, in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 first of all it is the spirit of the Lord one it is the spirit of wisdom the spirit of understanding the spirit <coughs> the spirit of, of uh, counsel and the spirit of might the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of fear. What else do we need? That's complete, isn't it? You don't need anything else. So what I've just said to us as a church, we don't have to be defeated. We can be victorious. And the Bible said we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Amen. What a, what, what, a, what a lifeless and dying church needs is the Spirit of God. John 14, 13, and 16. Let me show you some things right quick that Sardis didn't have they needed. And this is probably as far as we get. Oh, man. Can we start all over? It says, this is what the church at Sardis needs. Uh, what a lifeless and dying church needs is, first of all, it has to have and needs the Spirit of God. John 14, 3. It needs to seek the conviction power of the Spirit. Romans 8, 11. Needs to seek the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Needs to seek the, <clears throat> needs to seek the guidance of the Spirit. John, never lead you wrong. John 16, 7, Romans 8, 14. Needs to speak... Revival, the Pentecostal fire of the Spirit, Matthew 3.11. Need to seek the witness and power of the Spirit. Need to seek the quickening of the Spirit, Romans 8.11. Let me just share, uh, maybe I thought I had one more, but I believe that wrapped it up. Now let me just, and that time's going, I apologize in a way, but you know, this, this is important when you think about the sevenfold ministry of the Holy Spirit. And see now, think about this church. Here's a church that started. Now, look what God says about them. Let me just read it and share some things right, right briefly. And unto the angel of the church at Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven are the completion of the, of the Spirit of God, and the seven stars which are the ministers of the pastors of the seven churches. He says, I know thy works. Now think about this. Here's a church and... And I, and I wrote down just all about this church. Here's a church that's got an organization for everything that's going on in town. They're meeting all the needs of all the social needs in town. They got works. They got works. They doing everything. And he says, I know thy works. I know what you're doing. But you don't get saved by works. The Bible said we we're saved by grace, what? Unto good works. But without the grace of God, the works not going to do you any good. Now God says to this church, He said, look, I know thy works. That thou hast a name, that thou livest and are dead. Okay, that's hard to imagine. Here's a church. It, it's got all these works, and I wrote all of this down. It's like some of our churches today. They've got a place for everybody to plug in and their social needs be met. they got a name that goes downtown and say they're one of the greatest churches in the community. Look what that church is doing. Amen. I mean, they got the works. Does that remind you of some things today in our day? And some organizations that we have 
they've got to works. And if you don't look beyond some things, you'll think they're for real. Amen? Amen. But they don't have the cross. Amen. They don't have the blood. Amen. They don't have repentance. They don't talk about salvation. They don't talk about being born again. They don't talk about how sin will send you to hell. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. They've got to works, but they're dead. Amen. Did impress God. Brother, it impressed, impressed the folks down the street. People wanted, wanted to go to that church. They wanted to join that church. Why? Because the pastor get up and tell them what they want to hear. I made a statement this morning. I got some odd looks from somebody. I knew I hit a nerve. <laughs> but you couldn't argue with me for the biblical. As long as I stay in the book, yes, absolutely. you can't argue with me. You may get mad at me. You may not come back. But you can't argue with me. Yes. And I won't debate with you because the word's true. Here's that church. Boy, it got to works. Got to works. God said, you got a name that you're alive. People said, boy, they've got to sing in there, hadn't they? Yes. Woo! Woo! Uh, and you know, some of you boys, they can't beat them. They got, they've got the full orchestra. Boy, they got, the, they got it going on down there at Sardis. They've got some preachers. Boy, I mean, they can, they can stir folks. I know some folks, I don't mean this critically, but I know some singers, and part of them wasn't even saved. And they want to stir the people. That's what they call it. And the more you get them stirred, the more money you get. They're dead. God, if I can see through that sham, you know God does. Amen. Man, they had the name. Folks, go to that church. Oh, but God said you're dead. You're dead. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? Now, folks, you, we sat here and, and said, hey, let's don't be critical. And I'm not being critical, but I'm telling you, we got things going on today deceiving people. They're deceiving people. But notice what he says here in this verse. He said, you know, he said, he said uh, that you've got a name that you lie and you're dead. You know what that means? They did not have the Holy Spirit. There is no life a part of the Spirit of God. You can't function and operate apart from the Spirit of God. Here's a church that's dead. Not a life, no life about them. Oh, they had the works. They had the neon sign. They were flocking the people in. They were meeting all the social needs. And boy, here it comes. Notice what it says. Be watchful. You who are not saved, you better watch. The judgment of God's coming. And strengthen the things which remain. I believe they were just a little bit left. And God said you need to strengthen that. Not much. God's always got a remnant, but there's just a little bit there, and you need to strengthen that. Which, which remain. That are ready to die. They're just barely there. He said you need to do all. Not say you need to watch. That has to do with judgment. God's coming. He's going to judge this church. Not a church there now. I don't think it's sitting there now. But anyhow, he said, you've got to watch to them. And he said to those remnants left that just barely hanging on, you need to strengthen them so they can come on and be faithful to the word of God. And then he said this, remember, remember, remember the word. Remember what, what, what saves you. Be faithful to the word of God. Remember, remember that. Therefore, how thou hast received and heard. How that come? By the word of God. And hold fast the truth. And repent. Turn from where you're at. And turn to God. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt know that thou, what hour I will come unto thee. Is this my last Sunday night here as far as you know? I got one more Sunday night. We're going to do part two. Amen. This is so good. It gets better. We'll do part two, okay? Amen. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. That's right, Brother John. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad you're saved? Amen. Amen. I'm glad I belong to the church, don't you? Amen. Now, we've got a lot of good folks, a lot of good churches. I'm telling you, I believe if God were to come today, there'd be a lot of folks surprised. That's right. And so I want to challenge you tonight. Make sure that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know that you're saved. Because he may come tonight. And if I don't get home tonight, Lord, I know my heart. I will be in rest with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes, <laughs> I won't put that in there right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 And I hope you are too. And I feel like probably all you are. But there's a lot of folks out there that's not. And connect with our family, your family. And I've got a good friend that's i got some friends that's lost, and I, I'm just asking God somehow to help me be a better witness to them to get saved before it's too late. But church, let's be the church God could be pleased with. Amen. And I want to share some very important things when I come back next Sunday night when I wrap Sardis up, the dead church. Let's be a live church. Amen. Let's be a faithful church. Let's serve the Lord. Would you stand together while we pray? Why they come if there's a need. I don't know. You never know, you know. Uh, Sometimes that's me that needs to be in the altar.